So during the GDC showcase, which was a virtual event that basically took place of the in-person game developers conference, Unity had a keynote showcase where they basically talked about the current state of the Unity game engine, as well as many of the upcoming features that they're going to be adding it over the next couple months and years. Now during the showcase, they talked about a lot of things that have been announced already and some things that we've even talked about on this channel, but they did bring up Unity's data-oriented technology stack and talked about some of their plans for uh, maybe when we might see a release of the data-oriented tech stack. So in today's video, I wanna talk about that as well as some other things that we saw in the showcase and some things that have been happening outside the showcase that they didn't necessarily bring up in today's showcase. Now, before we get into the video, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more content about features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. And by the way, the Unity Asset Store is holding a kind of cool sale right now where uh, basically if you're a first time purchaser of something on the Unity Asset Store, meaning you've never purchased anything off there before, they're offering um, a lot of really cool assets at a steep discount. So I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but you can check out the link in the description if you wanna get some more information on that. So during the GDC showcase, I brought up three major points and those were visual scripting, net code, as well as rendering pipelines. Now we're not gonna to get too in depth talking about visual scripting in today's video, um, but Unity's implementation of visual scripting is pretty clean and I'm glad they're putting some effort into making it more stable and more feature filled. So people who you know have no really programming experience, they can kind of transition into game development using this visual scripting. Anyways, talking about netcode, which is Unity's kind of new multiplayer suite that they're gonna be focusing on. Really the big announcement here is they've created a sample game, it's called Boss Room, and it's going to be released on April 7th, and it should basically show how their implementation of netcode works, and um, seems pretty interesting. I don't have really much more to comment on that right now. And as far as rendering pipelines go, I'm glad that they're um, putting effort into building out all these different render pipelines that serve different purposes. Um, because you know not every game is made the same not every game you know needs the high definition render pipeline with the you know highest excellent quality graphics possible but that is still there is still an option for you if you do want to make that you know insanely high level of graphical fidelity in your game and when they're talking about the high definition render pipeline specifically they did show off a couple games made by just a single person using the high definition render pipeline and they're kind of showing like the things that they were doing to make these just beautiful, gorgeous looking games. Now they did also focus briefly on some 2D performance and optimizations that they are bringing to uh, Unity. Some of these things that they've already talked about before, but uh, the one thing that I hadn't heard is that they're actually working directly with ARM to um, do some specific optimizations for mobile processors. So I think that that's really cool that they're basically working directly with the chip manufacturers in order to get the best performance possible out of these lower powered chips. And they did announce that they have a new kind of sample scene demo which is available on the Unity Asset Store right now. It's called Dragon Crashers and it seems to be kind of like a turn-based RPG type game. Um, it looks really cool and it seems like it's a really good way to show off all the features that they've been adding into the Unity 2D side um, over the past couple years because I know they have been adding a whole lot of things in there. So again, this just seems like a really good kind of overview of everything and it should kind of give you some instructions on basically how to use all these features. So I'll leave a link down in the description where you can download the Dragon Crashers sample scene from the Unity Asset Store. All right, so now the moment that everyone's been waiting for, the data-oriented technology stack. So Unity came out and basically said that they're still actively working on it um, very hard. They're putting as much effort as they can in order to make it the best that it can be, both performance-wise as well as usability-wise, just to make it you know easier and more accessible for developers to take advantage of all these awesome features. And they basically said that they'll release it when it's ready. Now, I know that's not maybe the answer that uh, a lot of people wanna hear. They wanna hear you know, a hard and fast date, but I do like this approach that they're taking, that they're you know really just taking their time because they know that this is really going to be an extremely important part about how games are made in the Unity game engine for many years to come. And so they don't really want to screw it up and give people a bad taste in their mouth about what the data-oriented technology stack is. Now, when they were talking about it, they did bring up some kind of interesting points that I do wanna talk about. 
So they basically said that the job system as well as the burst compiler, those are already pretty much finalized and you can use those in um, your current Unity Mono Behavior projects. But then the other kind of portion of dots that they referred to was entities. Um, and they called it entities rather than ECS. So, you know, going back to kind of the terms video that I put out the other week, I wonder if they're starting to step away from the term ECS, entity component system, and just simply referring to it as entities. And they did expand upon that for a little while, talking about how entities is still pretty far off. It has a ways to go to get up to kind of their quality standards of where they want to be for a full release of entities. And it seems like the main kind of driving factor behind that is because they want to design the workflows better to kind of make them more seamless with the current kind of standard workflow of Unity. So, you know, being able to work with scenes, prefabs, and game objects, they want those kind of similar concepts that people are familiar with to transfer over to entities a little bit better than it is right now. So even though it seems like we're kind of a ways off from a full featured release of entities, this has me really excited because I do want to see where Unity starts to take this as they start you know, building out some of these better workflows. I, I really am interested into seeing you know, kind of how all of this evolves. But I do have faith in the Unity development teams that they're going to make something really clean, nice and easy to use um, in order to make the you know, entities and DOT stuff a lot more accessible to many people. Anyways, the only other thing for DOS that they showed off was um, a game called Population One, which basically seems like a VR version of Fortnite. Um, it looks pretty cool if you're into that kind of thing, but um, they're talking about how it was built off of DOTs and they were able to achieve a stable frame rate of 72 frames per second on the Oculus Quest. Again, that's the standalone VR unit. So that's pretty incredible kind of considering that it is this sort of um, battle royale style type game where you have a bunch of people, you know, kind of all in an arena fighting. And then, you know, I guess the last person standing wins type thing. So VR, much like mobile, I think is an extremely great candidate to take advantage of the data oriented technology stack because we can have these lower powered devices and still being able to bring, you know, higher frame rates for um, that smooth performance. Because especially for VR games, you really need those high frame rates in order to reduce motion sickness and things like that. Um, but even more important than having a high frame rate is having a stable frame rate because you don't want, you know, the frame rate to be going like really fast and then really slow um, because that's really just going to start messing with people when they're wearing that VR a headset right on their head. So anyways, outside the GDC showcase, a couple other things that I do want to bring up. Uh, the Unity 2020.3, the LTS version of 2020 has officially been released. So it's very exciting that 2020 is officially in the long-term support. Also, they did announce that the 2021.1, um, which is basically the first official non-beta version of Unity 2021, is going to be releasing sometime later this month. So um, I'd say probably next week or maybe the following week. So always exciting that we're getting some new Unity version releases. And then basically the last thing that I wanted to end on um, was just talking about some really cool preview package that Unity just released which is the Unity in editor tutorials. So I don't know how many of you have played around with the Unity micro games, um, but if you have such as like the Lego micro game or the FPS micro game, you'll notice that when you actually open those up in the Unity editor and play them for the first time, it's kind of like an interactive tutorial that basically guides you through um, how to use the Unity game engine. And I think it's really cool. It's, it's a great way for people to get involved with the Unity game engine the first time. Um, because it basically highlights things right in the editor, shows you where you need to click, where you need to drag things, and you don't need to click back and forth between a bunch of windows, but they're basically bringing these in-editor tutorial tools to the general public. So basically, someone like me, I could make a video tutorial about some feature of the Unity game engine, and I could maybe even make like a companion thing that goes with it, and you could actually load that up in the Unity editor, and be able to follow along with that tutorial literally without even needing to go back and forth between my video or whatever documentation you're following along with. So I think this is something that's really cool and do let me know if this is something that you'd be interested in me maybe trying to make some tutorials in and um, providing those to you maybe alongside a video or something like that. So anyways, that's kind of the bulk of today's video, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, Unity is putting on a sale in the Unity Asset Store 
where basically if you've never purchased something from the Unity Asset Store before, then basically you can buy any of these asset packs that they're offering for only $9.99. So for $10, I'm just going through the list right now, you can get the Top Down Engine, the Game Creator, Adventure Creator, the Odin Inspector, one of my favorite assets. Um, let's see, Gaia 2 Terrain and Scene Generator, Doozy UI. Um, there's some world building tools and some other, oh, the dialogue system, Dootween Pro. And then even going down further, you have a whole bunch of asset packs. So there's just a lot of really good stuff um, available for you, again, for only $9.99. Basically, it looks like you can purchase any one of these assets. And at uh, your checkout, you can type in the code MARCHWELCOME. And basically, that'll knock the price down to $10. And some of these things are pretty expensive, so this is actually gonna save you a whole bunch of money if you did plan on buying any one of these things at some point. So anyways, go check that out. I'll leave some links in the description below for that. Once again, if you did enjoy today's video and you found it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about features coming to the Unity game engine. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.